Hello, Scruff Tords and the occasional Vatnik. Welcome to the War Zone. I'm Scruffy, and this is Scruffy Tales. And in this video, we will be taking a look at a border town, the town of Tetkino, far out on the western flank of the Kursk Oblast, and the possibility that we may be looking at a new front in Kursk. And uh, ISW map, uh, not that many changes uh, that I can see. Uh, lines appears to be static, which is positive for Ukraine. It means that the confirmed Russian control is not moved forward. Russian claims are not moving forward. Uh, really interesting and important. Uh, also, uh, Ukraine has made gains over and around Vesoloya. Those have not been pushed back. No further Russian claims over here as well. Really important. So at the moment, uh, things have calmed down by the looks of it. And uh, that should give Ukraine the upper hand because Russia is not advancing. And over here, uh, Ukraine has been advancing. So very positive uh, at the moment. But what we're going to focus on is what's going on over here or potentially what's going on over here. Uh, because if we take a look at Andrew Perpetua's map, and so far he's the only one that has this information on his map, and that is this thing over here. As you can see, according to Andrew, Ukraine is making moves north of a town called Tetkino, right on the border, where you also have this highway leading in from Ukraine into Russia. And this is really interesting. Uh, He's not alone on having Ukrainian advances in the area south of Tikino. He and a couple of other mappers do agree. And that would be this part here. Uh, south of Tikino, uh, we have three or four mappers that do indicate, uh, just as Andrew does, that Ukraine is operating down here. But what sets Andrew apart is this section here, this portion. Uh, really interesting indicating that Ukraine may have crossed the same river north of Tetkino. There is a small bridge right here uh, that may be intact. Maybe I would assume that Russia has blown it, but there are a number of amphibious vehicles in the Ukrainian arsenal. Um, Swedish, some of them, uh, BV-206, uh, and even the, P, the PBV-302 that they're about to receive. Uh, but others as well, uh, they have uh, amphibious capabilities on land. Uh, so pushing across the river is doable. question is if they have done it, but um, it may not be unlikely. But we're, we're going to take a look at the, the com what the, the other mappers say about the area, area as well. Uh, here you have Mayakovsk 73. Uh, he has Ukraine um, over in this area, this factory area here, that has been uh, struck with artillery lately. Uh, Ukraine control map, the same thing has Ukraine. And you, they have had Ukraine in this area for several weeks uh, in this factory area. Also hit with artillery uh, quite often. Uh, they also have a larger area down here under Ukrainian control, not controlled, but contested by Ukrainian forces. And uh, the same as Andrew. And uh, ISW uh, has Ukraine pushing in a bit here, uh, south of Tetkino, up to these trenches, or probably in control of these trenches. Uh, and that is the extent of their control. Uh, kind of suggesting that the surrounding area may very well be contested. So as you can see, Andrew is not alone. Uh, with this, uh, I believe the Ukraine control map also has a uh, narrow contested area towards the border here. And we have had reports of Ukrainian infantry pushing in south towards uh, Tetkino a couple of days ago. So something is happening and Andrew is not alone. Several mappers are indicating that Ukraine is making moves in and around Tetkino. Uh, and as you can see here, Andrew uh, highlights the same thing, that we have moves in the south, cross the border, and things are contested. He does not list this factory up here uh, as contested, but uh, it seems that some of the uh, others 
uh, are pointing towards or leaning towards that Ukraine has made it across and are in that factory area. Uh, but what well and truly sets Andrew apart is this area up here. And uh, what does he base it on? A bit unclear, uh, to be honest. We don't know uh, if what he bases this on. But we will take a look at the firm's maps to try and get a feel for what's going on in this area around Titkino. Because, uh, and the firm's maps are, of course, NASA's uh, fire surveillance service where you can uh, uh, keep a track of large fires uh, globally. And uh, relying on those maps, we can actually determine where we have uh, concentrations of artillery strikes and airstrikes. So we'll take a look at that next. And go back a week, uh, take a look. This is Tetkino and this uh, gray white area, that's that big factory. Take a look at this, south of the border, 14th of September, the Russians are not in agreement and they are trying to bomb what appears to be a large concentration of Ukrainian forces. Very interesting. And uh, this is, of course, when this entire Glushkovo uh, uh, incursion uh, kicks off over at the Veseloye as well, to the east. Then on the 15th, as you can see, we have more artillery strikes close to Tetkino. This is a highway that leads into town and then continues north. Uh, that highway is this uh, tree belt here as well. It strikes south over here. Uh, is this Ukraine striking Russian targets? Uh, unclear, but things are happening at Tetkino, north as well, and in this area that is under Ukrainian control, west of the river, same. So as you can see here, 14th and 15th, things are kicking off, things are happening, very interesting. And things keep on going, calms down a bit on the 16th and 17th to the south, but it as uh, it uh, takes a whole lot of the turn to the north. Uh, up here, a lot of artillery strikes. Uh, the same thing over here on the Ukrainian side the day after. Uh, lines up with what was going on the 16th as well. Same thing over here. Russia is targeting Ukrainians here on these three locations for two days. And for two days, strikes are aimed at this forest over here. Is the, are these strikes against Russians or is it Russia attacking Ukrainians? Who knows, but this is the area that Andrew claims is under, uh, that is contested with a Ukrainian presence. So it could mean that Russia is beginning on the 16th and 17th to strike Ukrainians or that Ukraine is pushing, uh, is attacking uh, Russians in order to push across with the troops being attacked here. 18th uh, strikes on Ukrainian locations, apparent uh, as it appears, uh, west of the same river, close to the factory area. And then on the 19th, a lot of strikes in the south, more than likely as Ukraine is pushing in across the border, more attacks here up in Tetkino itself and some attacks on Ukrainians uh, in this part of uh, Russia that Ukraine has controlled west of the river, same. And now things get really interesting. More strikes on Ukrainian positions. Same thing over here, but take a look. Things are heating up south of Tetkino again. More artillery strikes aimed at Ukrainians as they are more than likely pushing across the border. But take a look, 20th and 21st. Is this indication that Ukraine is now operating north of Tetkino? Because we're not seeing strike specifically at the forests, but more out in the open. Maybe Ukraine has at this point crossed the river, having uh, struck Russian positions in the forests, and now Russia is striking the Ukrainians as they're cutting across. Maybe something is quite definitely going on in this part of uh, Russia north of Tetkino. I uh, forgot to highlight something in the previous uh, map. So uh, this here is the 21st, and that is even further north. Uh, lines up with what's going on at the 22nd. Uh, as you can see, on these two dates, a lot of strikes are aimed uh, into Russia uh, further north of Tetkino. 
is it Ukraine pushing in this way or is it Ukraine attacking Russian positions? Kind of feels like this is a Ukrainian push that is being countered, doesn't it? Uh, some more strikes down here on Ukrainian positions on the 22nd outside of Tetkino. More artillery to the north. Like I said, out in the open, away from that forest, uh, which should indicate that troops are moving over here. Uh, why would r the Russians be operating out here uh, when there's cover over here? Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it does line up with what Andrew is telling us that this is a contested area. Something is well and truly happening. 23rd of September, more artillery strikes. Not as heavy, but some. Uh, out in the open, closer to this forest here. Clearly, we there's still action going on. Targets are being hit. More Ukrainians attacked. Uh, west of the same. Some targets being hit in Tetkino. But now, we're seeing some really interesting stuff here on the 24th. That factory is being hit with uh, together with targets surrounding it. And south here... Here we know we have some Russian defenses, uh, trench lines. They are being struck. Is it Ukraine pushing in or is it Russia attacking Ukrainian positions? Here is the highway uh, leading up this way and then cuts into the uh, into town. Massive strikes aimed at the highway and the surrounding fields. 25th of September. What the hell is going on here? What is this? Massive amounts of artillery aimed at the highway and the field surrounding it. And if we take a look on 24th here and 25th, something is happening around this highway and these fields. Is this an indication that Ukraine is pushing in with vehicles to assault Tetkino from the south, crossing the border, moving at speed over these fields to try and outflank the Russians? Or are these Ukrainian strikes uh, preparing for such a push? Are they hitting re Russian uh, so reinforcements uh, that are moving into the area? I think these are Russian artillery strikes aimed at Ukrainians pushing north towards the town of Tetkino. And it continues early morning on the 26th. We'll see what happens later on during the day. But this is early morning hours of the 26th of September. We have even more artillery strikes aimed at the fields outside of this highway. Uh, I mean, this appears to be a clear indication that Ukraine has tried to push across the border and are assaulting north towards the town. Something is happening down here. And since all of the main mappers, they kind of, it kind of takes 24, 48 hours, sometimes 72 hours before they update what is happening uh, on the front line so the mappers are usually 48 hours late it's not real time their updates so this may be uh, we may see this in a day or two on the other mappers would be my guess uh, because this here to me indicates that something has happened along this part of the border here so all in all it kind of looks like Andrew is on to something. We have a lot of artillery strikes aimed up here, right? Up here we have a lot of artillery. We have seen how Russia has aimed a lot of artillery lately at this part here, striking Ukrainian positions on this occupied uh, bit of land. And also, we have seen artillery strikes both sides of the border down here, where we know Ukraine has pushed in with infantry. And we more than likely have a Ukrainian presence uh, right outside of Tetkino. And then in the last couple of days, something is happening down here along the highway and east of the highway. On these wide open fields that are uh, very much suitable for armored assaults across these wide open plains. Uh, something is happening down here and when you take a look at where all of these strikes are taking place it kind of does look like Tetkino is being surrounded and attacked on all sides all fronts and that it could indicate maybe that Ukraine has begun operations 
to push in and grab the town of Tetkino. Maybe, potentially, it's a big what if. <laughs> We're just gonna have to wait and see what the mappers tells us uh, in a couple of days, if this will actually show up on the maps eventually. So what if this is actually happening? Uh, speculation. Uh, we don't know. It's not yet confirmed, but we have seen on the firm's maps on the uh, that uh, fire surveillance uh, NASA service uh, that something is happening around it, Kino. What could that mean for uh, the battles in uh, Glushkovo County, Glushkovo region, Glushkovo district? Uh, well, first and foremost, it means Ukraine may be after Tetkino, primarily trying to secure Tetkino and this highway leading into Russia, uh, because then they unlock logistics into this region and they can bring in manpower, supplies, resources, and what have you. Uh, if this is also the case, uh, this will draw Russian resources to this area, to Tetkino. Uh, it will draw manpower and resources away from Veseloya, away from Glushkovo, all the way over here, which should uh, make this battle easier, which also should force Russia to move more forces away from uh, other parts of Kursk to help out here in Glushkovo, which should weaken those parts as well. So it kind of has a snowball effect if uh, Ukraine grabs Tetkino. When Tetkina is secured, if it's secured, uh, the next step will probably be to push out to this river and these streams and creeks in order to secure a couple of bridges, this main bridge, and then you have one, two, and three other bridges that will be important. <clears throat> one of the more important bridges will be this small one down here, because if Ukraine can get across here, uh, they are only six kilometers away from the border towns and the ability to help their forces taking part in this primary incursion into Glushkovo. Uh, so taking Tetkino, main objective, if that is going on. Secondary will be to push out here. Third, to grab this one to be able to continue pushing northward and then maybe grab these uh, bridges here. Uh, because... If we can get this far, and it all begins with taking Tetkino, if that is what's actually going on. Ukraine has the potential ability to push out this way, to threaten these border towns and help the main incursion into Glushkovo. They have the ability to push north to threaten this town here and follow the highway along and follow the river towards Glushkovo this way. And they also have the option, if they can grab these bridges here, to push straight into the middle of Glushkovo County, uh, coming up behind Veseloya. Uh, but these are a lot of what-ifs. Uh, this is something that potentially could happen. No guarantees, and it all comes down to if, when, and if, or maybe, uh, if Ukraine is actually beginning to pushing in to grab Tetkino. Uh, so it's, as you can see, it's kind of interesting. I mean, here you have the big main incursion into Kursk. Uh, here, Russia has had some gains and pushing down from Koronevo to Snagost and then eastward. For the past couple of days, six days, maybe seven days, we haven't seen any further advances from the Russians confirmed or claimed, which is a big deal. That could actually indicate that Russia has begun, begun to move forces away from here to Glushkovo to halt the Ukrainian advances over here. So this push may have had the intended, intended effect of drawing forces away from here to prevent Russia to actually make crucial advances uh, towards this main supply route. And if it's true that Ukraine is now beginning operations over here, that could mean Russia is beginning, beginning to move forces from 
Glushkova and Vesoloye over to Tetkino, weakening, weakening this front line here, forcing Russia to move even more forces from this front line to fill the gaps uh, over here at Vesoloye and Glushkovo. Like I said, that snowball effect. Uh, so we'll see what happens, uh, but we should give this a couple of days uh, so to give the other mappers a chance to update uh, their maps. Uh, but all of the artillery strikes along this border, surely that must indicate something. Uh, an attempt by Ukraine to push in? Did it fail? Did it succeed? Uh, unclear at the moment, but as we all saw on the firm's maps, something is going on right here along the border here, uh, just southeast and south of Tetkino and is if this is true that we have Ukrainians operating up here uh, very interesting uh, no doubt about it so there you have it uh, initial reports looking at it uh, with what little info we have it does look like that Ukraine may have opened up a new front in Kursk around Tekino uh, judging by all the artillery that has been striking that area of late and with Andrew Perpetua hinting on uh, Ukraine pushing in north of Tetkino. Uh, we'll see what happens in a day or two if this will be confirmed by other mappers as well. Uh, but it is without a doubt interesting if Ukraine is pushing in towards Tetkino and if they can actually establish a proper foothold in that case in the town itself. But that's it. That's all I have for you this time around. Uh, I hope you found it interesting. I hope I'll see you in the next one. As always, go pomarsh Ukraine and give them hell.